Welcome to Framework Fortune and welcome back Framework Fortune community. I'm your host Ben and we're going to dive into my top 10 precious metal stocks for the next few years. And these are mainly just gold and silver stocks. So I was originally going to do a top 5 but after all my research there's 10 picks that I really liked. And of course, like I always do, there is one bonus pick that's going to be at the end of the video. So be sure if you're a precious metals investor or you're looking to get into it, just stick around for the whole video and keep a lot of these stocks on watch. Number 10, we've got USAS, America's Gold and Silver Corporation. We can look down here, you can see the float, 132 million in float, and then we're gonna pop over to go to more financials. And the charting platform with all this information that you see before you is TradingView. If you've not checked out TradingView, I highly suggest you do, and there is a link in the description below for you to sign up with. And if you sign up with my affiliate link to TradingView, you will get free access to the Framework Fortune dot com website coming out very very soon now we can see the overview here looking at this balance sheet in 2020 they had total assets of 284 million total liabilities of 103 million making debt to assets 36 percent a little high but i'm not too concerned about it now taking a look at the free cash flow you can see that their free cash flow is actually getting a little worse was negative 27 million and now we're almost up to negative 100 million but take a look here on the chart and you can see that cash from investing activities 70 million so they're doing a lot of investing their cash from operating activities is only negative 20 million and then their cash from financing activities 72 million so they're investing trying to grow this company so the numbers i look at for investing do not look great for USAS but they are not terrible the biggest reason why this is making my list is because if you look on the daily chart since 2016 this stock has been in a big triangle of consolidation sideways it's currently right on the trend line at this dollar fifty area very cheap for this company when they're not in that bad of shape and they've been growing it's a slow growth but they do have big pops when they do get volume in so i think we could at least see this back up to three dollars because we still have a lot of room in this triangle if it can hold up here which it looks like it's going to do and then if it ends up breaking to the upside well that's just a lot more room for growth for this company and we could maybe see it eventually start paying dividends if their investments start paying off number nine on the list we've got mag this is mag silver corporation currently trading around 2159 this is the highest price stock on my list of precious metal stocks no dividend yield but only 84 million shares in float so that's pretty low float we'll pop over to their finances you can see the overview total assets 325 million total liabilities 9 million so debt to asset ratio only a 2.86 in 2020 great debt to income ratio we look at cash flow they're consistently negative but just barely and i would say that's probably because of tax purposes you can see they are doing some investing still 68 million investing but the operation activities are only 6.5 percent of their finances so that's very very low operating cost and the reason why this is low on my list is because their total revenue does not exist at the moment so they need to start making some money but they are in good position to start making some money and, and that's why i do like mag for the future mag on the daily chart since back to 2014 has been climbing it has its little moments of consolidation but always gets another big pop up at some point currently pretty high up we do have some resistance in this 24 dollar area but it seems to be holding the 100 and the 50 day we also have strong support at 18 dollars so it does look like it could start making new highs this year and we do have an earnings report coming up on august 15th 
So that may be the time that we see this break out if they kill earnings. Number eight on the list, Northern Superior Resources. This is a junior miner. This stock is currently under a dollar, only 91 cents right now. And you can see since December 2019, it's been on a straight uptrend. We can see that Northern Superior has 46 million in float, very low float, and this is an OTC stock. So you won't be able to buy it off of apps like Robinhood or Weeble. You will need to have Thinkorswim or Street Smart Edge, which has free commissions on OTCs, and you can mark or order in the OTCs if you didn't know. Looking at the overview, you can see that their total assets are 15 million, only 1.6 in total liabilities, 11% debt to asset ratio. Check the income statement. Of course, we don't have any total revenue yet because this is a junior miner, but they're set up to make some money. And you can see each year their assets are growing and their liabilities are barely even moving. They're cash flowing in the negative less than a million dollars and you can see the free cash flow has shrunk to where it's now about half a million negative. So we got top resistance at this 125 currently bouncing off the 200 day and the uptrend. Got a little bit of resistance right there in this dollar area. If it can break back above a dollar then I think we'll easily see it to a dollar 25 to test. And that would be the third test so we could see a breakout there as this is a triangle of consolidation here over the last seven months number seven on the list we got fortuna silver mines fsm float around 182 million go check out their finances you can see total assets 1 billion Liabilities only 359 million, so the debt to asset is 31%. That's not terrible. Looking at the cash flow, they do have free cash flow, which is very nice. They've had free cash flow for the last four years, and I would say that will continue this year. And then here's the revenue, and you can see that they've been growing their revenue. In 2020, it was 290 million, and it looks like for this year, Right now, currently they're at 357 million. So, definitely a growing company. Now, one concerning thing on the chart is this is a head and shoulders pattern. So, we got a shoulder, head up here, this big tip, and then a shoulder down. So, of course, the shoulders have arms. There was your arm there on the upside, and here is your arm to the downside. It is trying to hold this 550 support which was previous support and resistance before. There's also some very strong support and resistance at the $6 area. If it can hold 550, then we want to see it break back above 6 pretty soon and start holding that as support again like it did here. The 50-day and the 20-day have crossed to the bearish side, but that may be short term as you can see it does that every once in a while just dropping below the indicators and then popping back up so i mean 550 is not a bad price for it anyway the next support down would be about 450 and then four number six we've got sandstorm gold this is ticker symbol s-a-n-d you can see that they've got a 200 million in float no dividends Let's pop into the financials. You can see for 2020, 649 total assets, 11 million total liabilities, 1.8% debt to asset ratio. Very nice. Taking a look at the revenue, revenues have been growing year over year. Check their cash flow. They were negative in 2019, but 2017, 2018, and 2020, they are in the positive and 2020 is actually their biggest year so far with 64 million in free cash flow so i like everything i'm seeing on sandstorm as far as the financials go taking a look at the daily chart we've got a nice uptrend that sandstorm has been on last year in july this is all the way up at 11 dollars currently at the beginning of july we're at 926 so we could see this make another high the price is getting hung up in these EMAs. It had a pullback below the 200 day, but it is back above it and the 100 day. Need to see some volume come in. Little low on the RSI, so it could possibly be 
a buying opportunity for this to make another leg up. In any case, if it doesn't hold up and continue to rip, if it comes back down to the trend line, I'd be looking around six to 550 for possible entries there. But pretty strong company and it's on a nice strong trend line. <music> Number five, we have Alamos Gold, AGI. Pop down here, we got a dividend on this stock, a yield of 1.29%. Not a huge dividend yield, but these are gold and silver stocks. They usually have pretty good growth, so any type of dividend is going to be nice with these. You got a 382 million float. Pop over to the finances, they've got 3.6 billion in assets, only 785 million in liabilities. Debt to asset is 21.59%, so not too bad there. And looking at the revenue, we got growing revenues 2017, 562, 2020, 787. And so far, it looks like in 2021, 834 million. Now here in 2020, they had a free cash flow year of 127 million and expected even better cash flow year in 2021. So this company is looking real solid. So this looks like this is a quarterly dividend, pays out three cents. We look back in 2019, it only paid out one cents. So you got consistent dividends, but you've also got consistent dividend growth as this stock is climbing. Currently is right at the uptrend testing, trying to get back above it. It did have a crack back here. There was a pretty deep pullback, but rebounded pretty quickly back above the trend line. So this little drop below the trend line here doesn't scare me that much when this thing has made a lot bigger drops and still recovered back above the trend line. The 20 day did just cross over all the EMAs. So we are bearish currently. So we just need to see Alamos hold up this area. It does have some support at 750 as well. But if it can hold up that area, then I think we'll easily see it get back up to 10 and maybe even for some new highs of 11 and 12. Number four on the list, EGO. This is Eldorado Gold Corporation. We're gonna take a look down here. 180 million in float, no dividend, pop into the financials. 4.9 billion in assets, 1.2 billion in liabilities, 25% debt to assets, that's not terrible. You can see their revenue has been growing pretty fast though. And this is why this is higher up on the list. 2017, they were bringing in 405 million. 2020, they doubled that, bringing in 1.8 billion and looks like pulling in 1.11 billion so far. And then we take a look at the cash flow, 2020, they were in the positive 247 million cash flow after having some negative cash flow years. And we have an uptrend similar to AGI, where Eldorado Gold has cracked below the uptrend and is bearish. 20 day below all the EMAs, but it had that same dip that AGI did. So both of these are kind of running together. If you were going to pick one over the other, I probably personally like EGO better. And EGO does have earnings coming up at the end of the month. Number three on the list, we have MMX. This is Maverick Metals. This is only trading around 544. Only 50 million in float and does pay out a 0.9% dividend yield. Currently, they have 379 million in assets, only 38 million in liabilities, so 10% debt to asset ratio. Very nice. Total revenues have been growing the past four years. 2020, we had a $54 million year, and it looks like we're going to have a better year in 2021. And we have some positive free cash flow over the last year and a half here. Looks like we're gonna have an even higher free cash flow this year. So Mavericks is up here at the top and it's number three because it has been on this trend line, not hardly having any pullbacks besides that one random one that most of them had. It just bounces up and down in a continuous motion upwards. And I expect some type of pretty decent sized breakout coming soon with this type of consolidation. It is a little ways off the trend line, but holding up that 200 day at that 530 area, 525 area. Got some resistance around 650, but we have earnings coming up in August. 
a little low on the RSI right now. And their dividend payment is quarterly. They're just paying out one cent dividend. So not a great big dividend. You're getting four cents annual but the stock is only five dollars with a lot of room to possibly run so it's just a little bit of icing on top of the cake number two on my list we have drd this is drd gold limited we got a dividend yield of 4.36 percent a little bit higher there and they don't have the float, but we'll see if we can find it. Their market cap is around 900 million now, 326 million in assets, 94 million in liabilities. So debt to assets, 28%. I like it under 30, so it's right where it needs to be. Taking a look at the total revenues, we've got revenues growing for the last four years. Very nice jumps. And taking a look at that free cash flow, we got a free cash flow. And even before, it wasn't that far off from being in the positive. The two bad years that they had, four million and four million negative, eight million to the positive in 2018, and killed it in 2020 with 60 million, and looking like they're going to kill it even more in 2021. Taking a look at the chart, we have a nice, healthy uptrend. No weird movements. There was that one little drop that most of the gold companies took right there. But still pretty fluid movement, getting a big explosion back in 2020 last year in the summer. And we've been consolidating, bouncing off of this uptrend. We also have some strong support in this $10 to $10.50 area. That's currently holding up as well. So I would expect this to turn around and start moving back up. A lot of room to run if it can get to those previous highs at $18. Low on the RSI, quarterly dividend. They pay out 20 cents, so that's 80 cents a year at a $10 stock. Nice dividend yield. So definitely keep a close eye on DRD. And finally, number one, we have BTG. This is B to Gold Corp. This one has not been on my watch list at all. I never heard of it and just happened to run across it while I was doing my research on the rest of these. And it made number one, and you will see why here very soon. So their dividend yield is 3.87%, and this is a $4 stock, so very cheap with a decent dividend yield. 1 billion shares in float, a little bit higher float than I would like, but I'm okay with it. Total assets, 3.36 billion. Total liability, $700 million. Debt to assets, 20%. I can dig it. Total revenue, all the way up to $2 billion just about. In 2017, they were only making $660 million. In three years, they have almost tripled that, coming in close to $2 billion. So big money, and this is only a $4 stock. Billion-dollar company, $4 stock. Look at their free cash flow. Since 2008, just bringing in millions and actually brought in over a half a billion in 2020 and looking to have even higher numbers in 2021. So they are bringing in some big money and it shows. And you look at the balance sheet, you can see how the assets have been increasing and those liabilities have been going down. Looking at the chart, we got the dividend payments down here. They paid a four cent dividend quarterly, 16 cents annually, $4 stock. Can't really beat it. Even though it has a billion in float, this thing can move. It doesn't move quite as crazy and as fast as some of the other ones, but when it gets volume, it can have some nice pop ups. From this big drop here, like they all got it ran from two all the way up to eight. Currently, it has got support below it at the 425. Four dollars, three fifty. It is below all the EMAs, but if it can hold up here, we are at the tip of a big triangle. There's a downtrend that's been going on. That strong support, tons of strong support below it here soon, and right where the tip of this triangle is is actually earnings for them coming out in August. So if they smash earnings like expected. We could see a big triangle break out on this and maybe back up to $8. Really low on the RSI right now too, actually under the purple zone. So that's nice to see. Even if it cracks below some of these support areas, it probably won't drop much lower than $3. Even in this 
big drop there in the COVID drop, it got down to 221, which was clearly a buying opportunity on this precious metal stock. And it doesn't really follow a lot of the other one's charts. It's kind of in its own league because how much money it's making, the decent dividend that it's paying out, that billion and float keeps it from moving too rapidly, which makes it appealing for longer term investors. <laughs> So it's time for my bonus pick, and since you stayed this long, I'm going to throw in a second bonus pick, because I appreciate the Framework Fortune community and new subscribers who actually like the content and want to watch it and be a part of all this movement. So the first bonus, and this actually could have made my list, but it's an ETF, so it's a basket of stocks, it's not just one stock. But it's been on that very nice uptrend since September 2018. Currently down to the trend line. A lot of support in this $28 area. This also pays out a 1.6% dividend yield. So they pay out a $0.31 cent dividend buy annually it looks like. So every six months. So it's about $0.62. Cents. It is around $28, but this fund has a lot of good picks in it and some picks that were more expensive like wheat and precious metals that I didn't want, really want to put on the list. So if you're looking to get into precious metals, maybe you're new to investing in precious metal stocks, this is going to be probably one of the safest bets because it is an ETF of multiple companies. If one company, one stock starts going downhill, the investors who control this ETF will take that company out and put a different company in that's performing better. So you have that constant monitoring without you having to monitor the stocks yourself. These gold and silver ETFs can be pretty good and Ring is actually one I like the most out of a lot of the ETFs I've seen. Now for my last bonus pick. This is Ross Can Gold Corp. This is a junior miner. There's a lot of rumor. Their CEO has been on Kitco News and a few other social media platforms talking this stock up. If they do what he says they're going to do and they're able to capture the mines that they want to capture and it actually has as much gold and silver in them as they think it does, then this thing could explode. It's currently only 37 cents. You can see back through here in March, it got some pops, just one day pops, quick pops, all the way up to 80 cents. The so Ross Can Gold is an OTC stock. Once again, you can't buy those with Robinhood or Weeble. Now they only have 173 million in float. No dividend yield, of course. Take a look at their balance sheet. They got 2 million assets. 2.8 million in total liabilities, so their debt to assets is 127%. Very high. I don't like that, but this is a newer company. And if you look at the cash flow, the yellow line is the financing. So they are getting their financing, getting the money they need to do what they need to do. And their operating costs are only 1.15 million. So it doesn't cost a lot of money for them to stay in business. Now they're not investing anything because they're not making anything. You can see no gross profits, no revenues, none of that. Everything is going to be in the negative. So there's not going to be a free cash flow. But you can see by looking at this chart, they've slowly been building this company up. 2020, they really are starting to get active. When junior miners start to get active, they could explode. Now, it's a very risky play because all those things that they're expecting could turn out to be duds. If that's the case, then they may go bankrupt being in as much debt as they are not having any revenues. But if they do hit gold, if they do strike a nice a large amount, well, that changes everything and this company will no longer be a junior miner and more than likely shoot up in price quite a bit and their finances will be a whole different story. Roscan is a risky play, but the payoff to the risk could be huge. So let me know your thoughts on my top 10 picks for precious metal stocks. And also let me know if there's any stocks that you think should have made this list that didn't make this list. As I said earlier, this charting and research platform is TradingView, link down in the description. We are at war with the YouTube algorithm, so if you don't mind to smash that like button, appreciate everybody joining me as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time.